Qantas recently reported a record-breaking $2.47 billion in profit, yet taxpayers will still have to foot the bill for the $900 million in JobKeeper subsidies alone. Do you think, given the cost of living crisis, Qantas should be required to pay this money back? Joe Carney. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, well, good evening, everybody. And hi, Patricia. Hello, everybody. Um, it's a really great question. Look, I think there's no doubt that when the scheme was designed by the previous government, they uh, perhaps didn't design it quite so well, or as it should be, because really JobKeeper should not have gone to businesses that were making such big profits. Um, it's probably going to be a bit tricky now to get it back, uh, but certainly um, I don't agree that it should have gone to a company that really made such a huge point. Okay, but I think the question was more about Qantas as well, wasn't it? Just Not just about job. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you think Qantas has a social responsibility to taxpayers? Oh, um, absolutely. I think all companies that um, received any support or subsidies during COVID certainly has a responsibility to have used that responsibly and in the best possible way, which was to support workers mm. who were not getting an income and were being laid off because of COVID. Uh, Qantas has had a bit of a rough week, really, um, with um, uh, the ACCC having a look into ghost ticketing, um, with the credits, uh, you know, people demanding that the credits not be paid back by the December, where they've actually capitulated on that and said that they can have it back. Alan Joyce getting a big golden handshake. Um, so, you know, they've had a bit of a, a rough week, really, and I think uh, they've got a bit of shaping up to do in the next little while for Australians to really regain their trust and respect. Is the government too close to Qantas? Um, I think... Um, no more than any industry or business. You know, I think people have asked me, is the Prime Minister too close to Alan Joyce, mm. for example? Well, the Prime Minister was the Minister for Transport. Um, he's been in Parliament a long time. Alan Joyce has been around a long time. I think that you build relationships over time with all sorts of business people and, and you know, all, all the people that you interact with over that period of time. I, I don't think it's too close. I think there's a respectful, healthy relationship. Can I just jump in here, please? I think we need to look at the facts of the matter, and that is that Albanese's son got a Chairman's Lounge membership. So clearly there is quite a relationship there. Now, I'm 20 years old, his son's about 23. I mean, I'm not getting a Chairman's Lounge membership, that's for sure. And that establishes that there is definitely a relationship. And I think, look, we can't retrospectively take back money that was given during COVID, but I think we're actually missing the bigger issue here, which is that Qatar Airways had applied to the government to double the number of flights that they were making into Australia, taking people to destinations like the Middle East and Europe and Africa. And then for no apparent reason, the Albanese government and perhaps even Albo himself said, hang on a second, no, you can't actually do that. And what that means is it's actually protecting Qantas. Every time you go to travel, you're going to be paying more because there's less competition in the market. And for young people like ourselves, we were locked up during COVID for two years. Travel is a rite of passage. It's something that every young Australian should do, see the world and expand our minds. Yeah. But we are being blocked. Freya, you've, you've actually raised a couple of issues there in terms of the chairman's lounge membership. I mean, uh, what, what do you make of that critique? Oh, look, I'm going to take a pass on uh, the, the PM's son getting into the mm. chairman's and lounge. And why, why are you going to take a pass? Well, I, I, I don't think it's appropriate mm. to, you know... Because um, some people go... have argued that. Why don't you sure, think it's well, appropriate? Sure, well, I, I don't think it's appropriate to go into matters relating to the Prime Minister or his family. I think, uh, <laughs> I think that's... That, that's not something I'm going to do. I, where, where I do agree with a bit with what uh, Freya said, and I think uh, uh, you know, we need a competitive aviation sector. Um, and I mean, Qantas uh, probably made representations, but uh, you know, I, I represent uh, business more broadly. Um, mm -hmm. Our tourism industry has been struggling. Uh, I think Australians do want to have uh, access to more affordable air, air travel, and there was a great opportunity there. Uh, to encourage greater competition. Uh, and I think, really, the, the government has got some explaining to do here. We've, said, we've heard four or five different reasons mm. behind why this decision was made not to grant extra capacity uh, to Qatar. Um, I don't think we've heard a good okay. one yet. Well, one of the things the Prime Minister says is that uh, Qatar could fly to the Gold Coast, for instance, put on bigger planes and actually have the same capacity. What do you make of that argument? Oh, look, I'm, I'm not sure about that. I mean, I think uh, Qatar were, were an airline that was flying to Australia 
uh, particularly during the pandemic. They were one of the few airlines that was continuing to service the Australian market in a very difficult environment. So, look, I think here, uh, even if the government was not um, agreeing to the full 28 additional flights, uh, they could have uh, granted some of it. Um, we need extra capacity. There's no doubt about that. It would make airfares uh, more affordable. There's only a certain number of slots, though, right? Well, I... Uh, uh, no, we're not back to the capacity that we were pre-pandemic. So there is spare room there mm. uh, that could have been uh, made available. I think it would have promoted competition. It would have been good for our tourism industry. Mm. Uh, and I think it would but, have meant but that... everyone's assuming that that capacity is not being taken up. I mean, you're quite right. Qatar Airlines can bring more people in. They can go to plenty of places all around the country. They have unlimited freight access. That extra capacity is being taken up by airlines that we already have a contract or a relationship with. So Singapore Airlines, Cathay Pacific, Southern China, China Southern, um, they have increased their capacity and there is more... Um, they've, they've picked up more flights. So it's not as simple as saying that we didn't let Qatar in. There's, there's a lot of arrangements being made right across the aviation industry that have to be taken into account and the national interest has to be. It's not a simple thing. OK, but... So Jerry Carney, I've got to challenge you there because the ALP national president, who was the former treasurer in this country, Wayne Swan, says you should refu review the decision. Yeah. Thanks, Wayne. Yeah. Um, well, I think so, exactly. uh, well, no, I you know. disagree. I disagree well, with Frank. We shouldn't but review it. Wayne, I mean, Wayne, Wayne Swan, is not, Rod Sims, they, uh, Alan Fells. But, but, you know, they are not privy to the arrangements that exist right across the aviation industry. And the minister has said uh, that she will be having a green paper and ultimately a white paper, which is a you know, bit of a process to review the aviation industry and see um, how it's operating right now. So it's, it's not as simple as saying... You know, no, but, but Bridget McKenzie wants, for instance, a, a Senate inquiry. Why not allow that to happen? Uh, I think that it's really up to the Minister. It's the Minister's discretion. She's the one close to the contract. It's she a, knows what's being It would be a wise thing to do, wouldn't it? Sort it out with an inquiry? It's not my position to say whether we need an inquiry or not. I'm just saying the situation that exists at the moment. Ben, and it's not Vanessa, a I want to thing. bring you in. <laughs> inquiry? Yeah. Makes sense? I was just thinking, I'm on silver at the moment. If Qantas want to grant everybody gold <laughs> memberships, free flights <laughs> for the marginalised, bring it to it. That's my position. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing... I'm guessing you don't have access to the chairman's. Absolutely not. I didn't even. I didn't even know that. And I think going back to, to your question, who should be responsible? Um, you know, when it comes to social and corporate responsibility, um, there's a serious responsibility that corporations have to give back. And you know, True. with all due respect, and I know we're no, going to speak more to the voice to parliament and the campaign. If you can walk around and brand a yes to parliament with a big yes sign on your planes, well, you can give back to the people whose money you've taken and whose credits you've taken away from So them. you think they should pay back taxpayer money? Absolutely, if it's been taken and it's been unlawfully used in the terms of they're refusing to provide what's taken from people, there's a responsibility. Do you think or... they should pay back? Well, no, I, no, I don't. I mean, Why I think not, here, no, Why I not? Mean, it's, uh, look, this was uh, JobKeeper funding. Uh, there was a law that was passed. It was, in fact, passed with uh, multi-partisan support uh, in the parliament in the face of a pandemic. Uh, it's part of a $300 billion, uh, overall support program which was there to save the Australian economy during the pandemic. Uh, that is done and dusted. Uh, of course, now we're in a situation where there are questions about some of the other practices. Of course, the ACCC should be looking at that. Uh, they've got a competition uh, task force which has just been set up and aviation should be part of that. There's an aviation white paper coming out. So we need a competitive... Would you uh, like to see a Senate inquiry? Oh, absolutely. No problem with that. I, I think having a Senate inquiry, along with these other things, to get, um, in the end, a better deal for the Australian public, mm. that's a good thing. Darcy, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Look, I definitely agree that it should be paid back. We're in a cost of living crisis at the end of the day and there's a significant profit made by a private corporation and I think that at the end of the day the Australian public deserve answers. Um, and that's all I'll say on the matter. I won't go into the other details, but it's just it, the Australian public deserve answers. There's a significant amount of repair work that needs to be done by those organisations. And I understand a few people here were travelling on Qantas to get to <laughs> yeah. Q&A and, and nearly missed it. And my flight was delayed. No, no oh, well. <laughs> and, and funnily enough, and this is what happens when you don't have adequate competition in the market, the quality of services is actually reduced. Yeah. So currently in the last month, 32% of flights were delayed. That is almost double the long-term average of 18%. And this is what happens when there's not enough competition in the market. We pay more and we get less reliable mm. services. And it happened to us on the way here. Okay. All right. And